in the house of worship and praise one more time. We are going to go ahead and we're going to get started with our Sunday school on this morning. Um, I just recall, I didn't remember, it was a Sunday at the corner of my eye. We do have Sister Harris in the house today, so we're going to ask Sister Harris if she would come. She would give us a, a scripture, after which we're going to ask Dr. Kerman if he would come and give us a prayer, and then we will move directly into our Sunday school lesson. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Praise God. How many of y'all come to serve and praise the Lord today? Amen. 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 How many of y'all know that he is worthy and worthy to be praised? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm coming to you from St. John. Amen. Chapter 14, verses 11 through 15. Amen. Amen. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. I have read to you St. John chapter 14 verses 11 through 15. May the Lord have made have a blessing to the reader and the hearer of his words. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. We ever make the 
bishop will be continued to ask for his continued blessing and to elevate uh, uh, Sister Pastor Catherine Bank Michael. We ask the Father with your precious, powerful healing hand to heal and uh, repair the body. Father, we're telling you thank you for the senior citizens of this body of true love beings, those who lead by example and teach according to your precious word. We thank you for those who are the warriors and soldiers, the young folks with strength in their bodies that are willing to go forward and fight the battle on God's appointment. But then most assuredly, Father, we thank you for this opportunity on this Sunday morning. So we can ask you a thousand and one things, but it is our simple desire, Father. We ask one simple thing, that on this day, somehow, some way, use us, Lord, that you might get the glory. Humble before you, acknowledging Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and grateful uh, for the comfort, the leadership and directions of the Holy Ghost, and most assuredly for the love of God. Humbly we beseech you, giving honor, praise, and thanks. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Stone Cold, yeah. 
Hallelujah. Steve Hallelujah. Austin. And he would go on and blur all this stuff he was going to do. And, and when he got through, he said, and that's the bottom line. But, but I want to let you know that when it comes to Jesus, my Lord, my Lord. when it comes to your work in the yes. ministry, yes. it doesn't matter yeah. what you are called. It doesn't matter what's in front of your name or what's behind. Hide your name. It doesn't matter any nickname somebody might give you. You have to get to the bottom line. And the bottom line is about Jesus. It says, who did not depart from the temple, y'all. Mm, Lord. But serve God with fastings and prayers night and day. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. She, she was about the Lord's work. She was serious about this thing. It, it gave us two references where it said she did not depart from the temple. And then she stayed in the temple with fasting and prayers, not just during the day or not just at night, but night and day. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Is anybody that serious about Jesus? I want to know when was the last time you put your everything into anything? It ought to be a serious matter when it comes to our walk, our testimony, our witness, what we're going to do for Jesus. I'm reminded, 1 Corinthians 10 and 31, whatsoever you eat, whatsoever you drink, whatsoever you do, do it to the glory of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. She didn't depart. This godly woman served God with total devotion. Total devotion. She didn't give him some of herself. She, she didn't give him what she may have considered the best part. She gave her total devotion. Lord, have mercy. Anna's close walk with God was shown by her love for Jesus. You know, I don't do what I do because I want Bishop to call my name because I want my brother, Dr. Kerman, to give me a pat on the back or say, Atta boy, I do it because he loved me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He loved me so much that he sent his only begotten son. Somebody ought to get excited about this. When we think about, that's what my sister say, when I think about yes. the Lord and what he's done for me, get excited. Y'all say, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Well, you're supposed to be teaching and say, not preaching it, but you know what? When you get excited, oh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Look, Anna's close work with John was shown by her love for Jesus and her desire to tell others about Jesus. Isn't that what Matthew said? Go to death. That's what he said. That's what God told Matthew to record at the end of Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Go eat that for <laughs> teaching, yes, telling, sir. believing, yes, baptizing. Yes, Get somebody yes, to listen to what God has to say. I love you so much. I sent my only begotten son to die. I want to know, are there any whosoever's in the house today? Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. She spoke of him and his redemptive power. Anna was a remarkable woman. As a widow, see, the, the scripture tells us she was only mad for, for seven years. But now, 84 years later, she's still, Lord have mercy. See, see, that means she was a young woman when she gave her life to the Lord. Yeah, we, so we, we got some way till you're old, and then you want to get right. Yes. Lord have mercy. Somebody didn't hear that. On, Don't wait till you get old to get right. Woo. Lord have mercy. I got it. I got As a it. widow, she, she knew pain and loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But had not become better. There's too many better believers. It makes you of no effect. Yeah. Because when you should be testifying of the goodness of God, you got a sour puss on your face. You got to give somebody some hope. And the Bible tells us we ought to be ready at any time to tell someone, give someone an answer for the joy that is within us. Amen, amen, amen. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. 
Come on, Peter. Perhaps it was because she was a woman of worship and a woman of prayer. You know what? The Lord is a spirit. He is seeking those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, worship and prayer create a strong connection to God, thereby arresting your faith and hope. Put me in custody. I want my faith and hope in Jesus to stay in custody. Don't bail me out. I want to have a relationship that rivals the relationship of Paul. The relationship that rivals the relationship of John the Baptist. A relationship that will rival that of the Son of God. That's what we should be seeking. It's not a Sunday morning fellowship. It's not a Sunday morning relationship that she had. But a Monday through Sunday walk that will keep you in Perfect peace. Lord. Okay, let's leave from, from Luke and let's go over to Acts chapter 2, verses 16 through 17. The Holy Spirit is poured out on the church. We remember what Jesus told the disciples in John 14. Oh, let you not your hearts be troubled. Oh, they were, they were in bad shape. Jesus, you're going to leave us? Oh, Lord, have mercy. But he told him in verse 16, he said, I will pray to the Father to send you another comforter. Ah, uh, what's that Greek word? Heteros. Another one just like me. I want God to give you the same thing when I leave in the Holy Spirit. You won't even know I'm gone. You won't physically see me. But oh, what thing I understand about this. Jesus had a physical relationship, but the Holy Spirit. Got an internal relationship. Oh my God, He keeps us, y'all. It goes on. It says in, in in verses sixteen through twenty-one. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Oh, we going into the Old Testament. Look, look what Luke is doing. He he taking us over into the Old Testament, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out. Of my spirit on all flesh. See, somebody needs to understand we're not talking about the last days. Because we think it's the last days. But in the day of Jesus himself, once he had ascended with the disciples, the apostles who were waiting on that power that was going to come from on high, he was already talking about last days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, look at him. That I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the oh, this is the preaching part right here. Who shall ever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm. Yeah, that's a magnificent invitation. Whosoever calls on him. You see, in the midst of the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, among signs and wonders and speaking in tongues, what did Peter do? Essentially, he said, let's have a Bible study. That's what Peter said. I want to have Bible study. I know I messed up. I know I denied him. I know I cut somebody out because I was afraid and in my fear. But now I'm going to let my faith take place. I'm going to tell you about this man. I'm going to tell you about the one who hung, bled, and died on the cross. I'm going to tell you the one who we walked with, the one we slept with, the one we broke bread. I'm going to tell you about it. Let's have Bible study. But look, look at what Joel the prophet wrote in Joel chapter 2 verses 28 through 32. I'm going to read you from the Good News Translation of 
the scripture. It is the day of the Lord. He says, starting in verse 28, afterward I will pour out my spirit on everyone. Not some folk, not particular folk, but on everyone. Somebody ought to bold that highlighted yellow, green, orange, yellow. Your sons and your daughters will proclaim my message. Your old people will have dreams and your young people will see visions. Y'all, Luke didn't have a conversation with Joel. Joel lived so many years before him. And he wrote that in the book, in the scripture of Joel when he scribed it. But, but Luke is talking about the same thing. And at that time, I will pour out my spirit even on the servants, both men and women. I will give warnings of that day in the sky and on the earth that there will be bloodshed, fire, and clouds of smoke. The sun will be dark and the moon will turn red as blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. But all who ask the Lord for help will be, will be be saved, not might be, not you got a good chance, but will be saved as the Lord has said. See, some in Jerusalem will escape. Those whom I choose will survive. This quotation from Joel focuses on God's promise to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Y'all know we already have a taste of his spirit. When he formed man, when he formed Adam from the dust of the ground, he breathed into his nostrils and he became a living soul. See, it wasn't the dust that God put all together and formed into that flesh pot. But when he breathed, see, God himself is a spirit. When he breathed himself, his spirit into man, he became a living soul. Mm. So, so, so we already got a part of him. But what we hear, see now is that he's going to pour. I wish I had a demonstration set up for you, but I'm just teaching Sunday school. There's a difference between a sprinkle. There's a difference between a and a pouring out. Yeah, what, what flavor of Kool-Aid do you like, Bishop? What, what flavor of soda do you like, First Lady Kirby? Whatever it is, just get you about three or four liters pour it into a bucket and then I want you to just lay Dr. Kirby down on the floor and say I'm going to pour out on you. Lord, y'all get the illustration, y'all get the picture of what I'm talking about. He poured out his spirit over all flesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lord have mercy. It shall come to pass in those days. The idea of the last days is that there are the times of the Messiah encompassing both his humble coming and his return in glory because Jesus had already come in humility. He was born of a virgin. He was born in a stable. He laid in a manger in swaddling clothes. They were aware of his return in glory could be at any time. In using the quotation from Joel, Peter explained what these curious onlookers saw the Holy Spirit pouring forth upon people before the Holy Spirit was given in drops, which I just spoke. Now it is poured out on all flesh. This was a glorious emphasis on Pentecost. Under the old covenant, certain people were filled with the Spirit at certain times for specific purposes. But now under the new covenant, y'all know we in the age of and the, uh, uh, the dispensation of grace. There are seven dispensations. We're in the sixth dispensation right now. The church, the age of grace. And this is what he's talking about. It's been poured out on everyone. Now. Under this new covenant, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is for all who call upon the name of the Lord, men servants and maid servants, male and female, ain't no in between. Yeah. Let me just make that clear. Uh, yeah, 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 ain't no in between. Ain't no, I, I, well, I was born this, but this is what I identify with. It's born male or female. There had been no provision for or 
no promise of an abiding presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of any Old Testament saint. This changes everything. Jesus came on the scene and he changes everything. Y'all seen that movie, The Equalizer with Denzel and they got a new series coming out with Queen Latifah, The Equalizer. Well, I'm gonna tell you, this is the OG right here, the original himself. Jesus is the Equalizer. Whoever calls on his name, Peter also used this passage from Joel to uh, do an evangelistic uh, uh, reconnaissance. This, this outpouring of the Holy Spirit meant that God now offered salvation in a way previously unknown. Yeah. To whomever calls on the name of the Lord, whether they be Jew or Gentile, it would be many years until the gospel was offered to the Gentiles. Yet Peter's sermon text announced that it was coming. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. The, the idea is expressed in Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. Yeah, when we need a place to go. When we need a place to find refuge. Uh, the scripture tells us he's a strong tower. He's a high tower. He, he gives us what we need. Yeah. All right, let's move on over to Acts 21, verses 8 and 9, and we'll finish this thing up. Paul arrives in Jerusalem. Oh, some stuff is going on now. Arrival at Caesarea at the home of Philip the Evangelist. Oh, we got another title here, Evangelist. We had prophetess, now we got an evangelist. It says, on the next day, we who were Paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the evangelist who was one of the seven and stayed with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. Philip the evangelist, one who was of the seven. This is telling us that after Peter's uh, excuse me, Philip's work in bringing the Ethiopian unit to faith. Y'all remember that story about the Ethiopian youth who was out in the wilderness and he stopped and he began to read the scrolls and, 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 and because Philip was doing what he was told to do, he came across this Ethiopian unit and he said, do you understand what it is you're reading? How can I unless some man help me, teach me? Give me understanding. This is after that. He preached through the coastal region and ended up in Caesarea. Many years later, he was still there. So you don't need to go until the Lord tells you to go. <laughs> His title was befitting him. He was called Philip the Evangelist. But let me tell you something. Your title reflects who you are and what you do. Like Nolan, the bishop, and, 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 and Janie, the first lady, and, and, and Dr. Kerman, the pastor. His, his, his title describes who he is and identifies him. Philip was known by the good news he presented to other people. The good news about who Jesus is and what he has done for us. Amen, amen. Yeah. Doris the evangelist. Greenleaf the musician and Nene the servant. We all should have a title. We should be recognized by who we are by what we do. See, if you ain't doing nothing, you don't have no title. Oh, oh, okay, I'm stepping on toes. Let me move. Somebody ought to say the house right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. It's interesting. <clears throat> it's interesting that with these four daughters who had the gift of prophecy, none of them seemed to tell Paul anything about his upcoming time in Jerusalem. How many know that God tells you what he wants you to know? You know, the gift of prophecy is a gift that comes from God. God feeds that gift, and he gives you nothing. There's nothing for you to say. 
Look, Philip. Paul, 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 anything. He, he wasn't able to be told anything about the, these four virgin daughters that prophesied. The Holy Spirit could have used them during this situation. But he chose to use someone else. According to ancient records, the daughters, or at least some of them, lived to a great age and were highly esteemed as informants on persons and events belonging to the early years of the Judean Christianity. They were used for specific reasons and we, each one of us, is used for a specific reason by God. God don't make everybody the same. Sister Woods say, I, I, well, I don't do things like you do. Because if I did things like you do, one of us would be unnecessary. And that's sure enough the truth. We don't act alike. We don't talk alike. We don't think alike. And God uses us as he sees fit. Thought to remember. God gives people for ministry according to his will and his plans, not ours. We need to remember as we look at this lesson called to prophesy. There are things that God will reveal to us and some things he will not. If he revealed everything to us, what would be the need of faith? So God allows us to receive what we need based on who he is and who we are to him. Does anyone have any questions on our lesson on today? Any questions? Any comments? Bishop? Yeah, I, I just want to share, um, and it talks about why is it so it's more relevant now, but say 20 years ago, it was so hard for women to actually get into the ministry. But we see it now it's changing. Uh -huh. And yet more, and, 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 and the problem. Is it just that that one scripture in 1 Timothy 2 and 11 and 12 that they, people want to uh, say what a woman can't do, really don't understand the meaning of that scripture? As part of the bishop, a lot of times, <coughs> excuse me, the activity and the use of women in the church and in ministry work is based on availability. There are things that the scripture shows us. If we look at scripture, scripture shows us the examples and activities of when God used women. But we get so stiff spiritually that we want to define what God will do and can do with whom he uses. But God is pouring out, what did you say? His spirit on everyone. Why? I got an interrogative. I got a question. Why would he put it on the men's servants and the maid servants for them to sit down? Uh-uh. No, no. I believe that God uses whom he wants to use because he is sovereign. What's the definition of sovereign? He does what he wants, when he wants, where he wants, with who he wants, for as long as he wants to. There are so many that receive his word based upon who the person is. See, some folk might listen to me. Some folk might listen to Bishop. Some folk might listen to Sheriff, uh, excuse me, Evangelist Hightower. Some folk might listen to Evangelist Thompson, Dr. Kevin. It depends on what the use of that individual is designed to do. Everybody don't get it. Everybody don't receive it. Go ahead. So, so many, many other women, uh, many women who <laughs> make a person with me, been taught back in when they was little that women ain't supposed to do this. So 
there will be more women who are baby. Because really, if you look at it, Doc, if you take the woman out the church, oh Lord, what would you have? Oh Lord. And, and so, and so here, so uh, <coughs> a lot of other women mm -hmm. would go forth and want to be used by God, and and we should be, but <coughs> they don't because of what they've been taught early. Mm -hmm. And they can say that women ain't supposed to be a woman, but it's yeah. only a man job. But no, as you said, God used who he wanted to use. The availability. He could have used anybody other than Mary, but he chose Mary. That's right. He could have used anybody other than Moses, but he chose Moses. So God mm -hmm. chooses who he, he, he wants to. That's right. That's right. Just as I said on the thought to remember, the last thing that I shared, God chooses whom he gifts and whom he uses. And I, let, let me just put it to you like this, too, because, see, like you just said, Bishop, if the women were taken out of the church, what would be left? I'm going to give you a dollar in pennies. That's a hundred pennies. Now, take each penny and let it represent the number of men in the church and the number of women in the church. Dr. Kirby, how many pennies would you have left if it was just the men? <laughs> uh, First Lady, Kirby, how many pennies would you have left if you took all the women pennies away from that group? Come on, Evangelist Cheryl, how many pennies would be left if all the men pennies were left to take care of the church? Y'all get my meaning? God is not going to let this thing die. This is his bride. This is his business. He's going to use whom he chooses to use. And I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of women that can preach some preacher pastors under the table. There are a lot of women that have a ministry that is at a level that exceeds some pastors I know. And God is using them. And they shown up being used here at First True Love. Amen. Anyone else? Questions or comments? Like from Zoom has a question. Amen. Amen. Well, we just thank God for our lesson on today. Thank you, Layla. She giving me some praise here, y'all. Thank amen. you, Sister Layla. We just bless God for this on today. Uh, Bishop, anything else? All right. Sister Tara, our assistant superintendent, is not with us on today. We just bless God that he continues to keep her covered in her endeavors and that uh, we will all have received something from his word on today. Amen? Amen. 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 We're getting ready to move on into our morning service. At this time, we are going to have a scripture and prayer, and we will have a song uh, from the First True Love Singers who will come. We'll give an A selection, and then we're going to move directly into the word of God. Amen? Amen. If you love the Lord, why don't you say, Ooh, I feel good. I feel good. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let me change this microphone now. Let me pray this one. By this being uh, fifth Sunday's uh, women's Sunday, we're going to ask uh, two of our ladies that would come up and, and do a scripture and a prayer for our singers that come in. Amen. This is the fifth Sunday. The ladies are in charge. Amen. Scripture and a prayer. Thank you. 
And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. I have read to you Romans 8, 28.
seeing a need. Yes. Yes. Going right to it. Thank you. Amen. Thank you again. So at this time, we're going to not delay. We're going to ask Evangelist Cheryl Hightower. She will come. Amen. And share the word of God with us. God is good. Amen. Amen. All the time and all the time, God is good. We're so happy to see our friends and family here today again. Thank you. We're still praying for our families as they're going through certain situations. But God, we all know God is still able. Amen. Amen. God is still good. Amen. As the song said, I love you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. I worship and adore you. Amen. So at this time, Evangelist Shura is going to come and share with us. Amen. Amen.
mission and his family and our sister pastor and all the ministers in the house and all the families and friends. I come to you this day just giving you what God has given me. And it's funny because, well, it's not really funny. It's kind of like a like a confirmation because we talked about choices this morning in Sunday school about how he chose these people, how he chose me and how he chose Moses to do what he did, how he chose me. Minds is coming from about choices. I just kind of just kind of forget, but I can't be totally wrong. But what is a choice? I'm going to get to my scripture in a, in a little bit, Bishop, because I'm going to go about this. This is part of it. But what is a choice? The word choice means to select freely. After consideration, we choose a career. It's a choice Amen. to decide to especially to especially vote for someone. Choose a captain. We elect this person by choice. Amen. To have a preference of choice over one thing or another. To decide whether to want to go by train, whether you want to go by bus. It's a choice that we yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. We make these decisions, and sometimes choosing can be. It's an, you have to think of the alternatives out there. You have to think of, what well, if I don't choose this, what will I choose? And ladies, we all want to be chosen, right? You're dating someone. You want that man to choose you. And in his choice, that means he's going to marry you and, and say, that, hey, this is mine. Sometimes he's going to bring him. That's a choice. It's a choice. However, some choices don't come out right. Some choices don't end the way you think they should. I got a few quotes on choices. I just want to share them with you. It says, choices can change our lives profoundly. The choice to mend a broken relationship, to say yes to a difficult assignment, to lay aside some important work, to play with a child, to visit with a forgotten person, these small choices may affect many lives eternally. And that's from Gloria Gaither. Right. To choose, we may, we, we may reveal the true nature of our character. Mm -hmm. Those are choices that we make. And sometimes our choices, they end up wrong. Or yeah. they end up not so well. Yeah. It says, I choose to live by choice not by chance, to make changes, not excuses, to be motivated, not manipulated, mm -hmm. to be useful, mm -hmm. not used, yeah. to be complete, to excel, and not compete. Mm -hmm. I choose self-esteem, not self-pity. Mm -hmm. I choose to listen to my inner voice, not the random opinions of others. Right. And when I thought about that, I thought about that, that inner voice. That's the Holy Spirit saying, do this, or don't do that. But it's my choice to follow that choice or that decision. But I choose to do the right thing. I choose to love you. I choose to be in this moment. Real love is not a feeling. It's much greater than that. Unconditional love is a choice. I want y'all to remember that unconditional love is a choice because that's what God has for us. He chooses to love us unconditionally. Amen. Even in our mess, even in our, our nastiness, He chooses to love us. Amen. Now, I don't know if y'all remember this person. Her name was Vesta Williams. She was a singer. There was a song that she sung back in the 80s because I'm my 80s baby. I wasn't born in the 80s, but I grew up in the 80s. And as I said, there are some choices that we make that we're not happy about. Or there's choices that other people have made that you're not happy about. And she sang a song. It says, I saw an old friend on the street. She said, today's your wedding. My heart stopped. Tears dropped. Saw my whole life pass me by. I had, I had to see you, baby. I never ran so fast before. I rushed inside that chapel door, 
You were waiting all alone and turned around and heard me call. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. That was a song that said, he chose someone, mm. but it wasn't you. Mm. Mm. We've all been there where we've wanted someone to choose us. Whether it's at an elementary where we're playing a game yeah. and we want to be picked for the team. Come on, come on, come on. I want to pick this person because they're good. I was always the smallest one in that group, but I was always the hardest playing person in the group. So I wasn't chose last because they knew my skills. But in looking at other things, you would think that they would choose the bigger person, especially if they're playing basketball or something that requires length. Or if the choir what requires endurance, you want someone that's going to be a blessed. So being chosen, we all want to be chosen mm -hmm. at some point in time in your life. Mm -hmm. You want to be chosen. You want to be chosen for that job that you're applying for. Mm -hmm. You want to be chosen Fair. for that for that mortgage that you want to get that house with. You want to be chosen by that person that you want to spend the rest of your life with. Oh, oh, oh. The only choice that we really don't have is the parents that we have. I didn't choose my parents. I'm quite sure my parents didn't choose me. But I thank God for them. Because we don't choose, unless you're adopted, that person is not chosen. You're born into this family. I was born into the Hightower family. It wasn't my choice. It was a choice that was made for me. But I appreciate and love, and I choose to love my family. It's a choice. We have choices. So we're going to leave best of all, and we're going to go on. And we're going to go on to my verse, which is 1 Peter 2 and 9. All right. It says, because we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possessions, so that you may proclaim the excellency of him who has called you out of darkness and into his warmest light. You may be seated. Because we are chosen. We are God's chosen people. Amen. That's a choice he made. And he could have chosen any other people, any other, any other race. He did. Jewish, the Israelites, those were his chosen people. But we got kind of, we got called into it because we are his people. We serve him. He called us in because we are the, what, the, not the Gentiles. We are the, what are we? Come on, Bishop. Get me out. With the Gentiles? Mm -hmm. Okay, we are the Gentiles. The Jews were the chosen people. But because we trust and believe, because we trust and believe in God, because we allow Him to lead us where we need to be, we were chosen. Because if you don't do what you're supposed to do here, guess what? I'm going to pick someone else over here that's going to do my will. I'm going to choose someone that's going to willingly come to me. I'm going to choose someone that's willingly going to do what I want. Ephesians 1, 4 and 5 tells us that he, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. In his love, he predestined us to, to, us to adoption as sons through Christ Jesus. To himself, according to the kind and intentions of his will. He chose us. chose us through adoption. And when you choose someone through adoption, you're choosing that person because you want that person. Well, so think of yourself as adopted children, even though we were blood washed and we were, you know, we're part of God's kingdom. But we were adopted into this because he chose us. And that's the choice I'm proud of. I'm proud to say I'm a, I'm a child of the king. Sin separated me, but because of the blood of Jesus, I'm readopted. I've been redeemed back into this home. John 6 and 44 says, No one can come unto me unless the Father who has sent him draws him, and I will raise him up in the last days. That means he chose me again because he can say, No, nah, I don't want you, Cheryl. No, I, I want the next person. No, I, I, no, no, the person behind you. But he chose me. Yeah, yeah. And he chose you. Come on, come on, come on. And that's something that we all need to be proud of. That's yeah. something all yeah. that we all can say, hey, I, I was chosen. Yeah. 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 All these choices that we make. These choices that we make. Romans 8 and 28 says, we know, we know uh, that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love God 
to yeah. those who are called Amen. according to his purpose. For the good. For the good. He could have chose bad for me. He could have chose another life for me, but he chose this life for me. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. And those choices that we make, whether good or bad, they're still our choices. John, John 15 and 16 says, you do not choose me, but I chose you mm -hmm. and appointed you to that that would, that would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain so that whatsoever, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give you because he chose me. He made a conscious decision and said, I'm choosing you, sure. Yes. I'm going to form you in your mama's belly. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. I choose you that one day you're going to come before my people and you're going to proclaim my word. Yeah. You're going to proclaim my, my will. You're going to proclaim all the goodness of God because he chose me. And it wasn't by happenstance that he chose me because he tells us that when he formed us in our mother's womb, that was a choice. He could have allowed us to be a Judas. He could have allowed us to be anybody else. But he chose us to do good and not evil. It's a choice. Deuteronomy 7 and 6 says, For you are holy people to the Lord our God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people of his own possession out of all the peoples who are in the, on the face of the earth. These are other translations, but it tells you that out of everyone, he chose you. You were way in the back of the group, and he says, hey, Pastor Kirby, I want you on my team. I want you on my team because I see in you what you're going to do, how you're going to spread this word, and how you're going to share with everyone the goodness of the Lord. I see in you, so I'm choosing you. I don't know if you were a bad kid. I can't tell because I wasn't there with you. I don't know if you were one of those mischievous children, but he chose you. This is Jesus, you got to give me some words over there. But he chooses those to make, a, to make an example. Because if we always did good, would you ever know the bad? Would you ever know that I'm being chosen? Bishop, I understand that when you were younger, you liked to fight. <laughs> but he still chose him. And what has he done? He's he's branched out and opened up two more churches. We've got True Lord North and we've got True Love South. But as that fighting child, you would have never thought that that child would have been chosen to lead a people, to teach a people, because it was a choice. I can't say that I was a fighter. I can't say that I was a bad child. But when my mama told me to not to touch something, that little hand went out there and she sure was quick to pop it. Mm -hmm. Knowing that that child was going to do what they wanted to, he still chose yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Out of all those kids, out of all the things that, that I've done, he still chose me. Come on. I'm not bragging about anything that I've done in my past. Yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about the choice that he made for me. He said, sure. Come on, come on. I know that you know that you're gonna have some rough times. I know you're gonna have some issues. I know that you're gonna be homeless at one time. Well, come on, but I'm come still on. gonna choose you because I know that you're gonna do yeah. what I have. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna tell everyone the goodness of God. You're gonna tell everyone that hey, I've been through here, I've been yeah. through that, but God, but God, but God, yeah. but God. Mm -hmm. and that's my testimony. <laughs> no matter what I went through, but God. But God. Yeah. Yeah. I remember driving down the highway and looking at the lottery sign saying it was like 200 something million. I mean, this has been a, this has been a while back. But I was homeless. I didn't have a job. Mm -hmm. And every time I looked at that sign, it, it, I could have easily went out there and played the lottery. I had a few chunks, few coins in my pocket. Yeah. But I trusted God. I said, God, you got me. Come on, come on, come on. And every time. He made a way. Come on, come on. Every time he provided, every time that he delivered, every time that he gave to me and made a way for me, he's my provider. So I trust him. I trust him. He knew that I was going to make that choice. He knew that I was going to choose him above all others. He knew that I was going to choose him above everything else. Yeah. 
You can take away cars. You can take yeah. away mm -hmm. money. You yeah. can take away yeah. people out of your lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you take away God, My what Lord. do I have? I have nothing. What do you have? Come on. Nothing. Come on. Come on. But it's a choice that we make to Come serve on. God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a choice that we make because we know that he's always going to have our best interests. Mm -hmm. Even our best friends, the people that we call friends yeah. and associates, they may say that they want what's best for you. Yeah. Mm. Mm. You know what goes behind that. Mm. But God always has your best interests behind you. He always knows what's best for you. Say, sure, okay, look. I know this job looks really good, and I know that it pays really well, and you can do all this, but I need you here in this section here. Mm -hmm. yeah. I need for you to do some things here. Yeah. Now, had I chose to go over here, then I would be dealing with excessive COVID, excessive sickness, excessive work. But in the place that I am, I can minister to everyone that comes into my building, to my office. I can say a word to make their day. I can say a word that God has given me to share with them. I can even pray with them and for them in this little place right here that God chose me to be. The choices that we make, they're impactful. Whether you choose to be good, whether you choose to be bad, whether you choose to be kind, whether you choose to love, it's still a choice. And it's what God allows. We got some things. Now, why would God choose us? You may have asked that question, because I've asked that question. Why would he choose little old me? I've done some dirt. I've done some things that I'm not proud of. But to answer those, we find that in the Bible, God's word. In John 15 and 16, it says, you did not choose me, on, but I chose on. you and appointed you so that you might, do, might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last so that whatever you ask in my name, mm -hmm. the Father will give you. Ephesians 1 and 4 says, He chose us in, He chose us before the creation on, of the world. A holy, holy and blameless in His sight. First Peter 2 and 9, which is my favorite verse, is that you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, yeah. a yeah. holy yeah. nation, yeah. God's special possession, yeah. that you may desire, that you may declare the praises of Him. Who called you out of darkness come on, come on, come into on. the wonderful light? It is undeniable that God has chosen those who are believers in Jesus. But why? Is there something special about me that led God to choose me? Of course not. The short answer is no. God did not choose us because of anything well, inherently in ourselves. Nothing that we've done, nothing that we could do is going to make Him choose us. He chose us out of his love and mercy and for his glory. Mm -hmm. Ephesians goes on to say, in love, the pre he predestined us for adoption of sonship and daughtership, excludes the women, through Christ Jesus, in accordance to his pleasure and his will, to praise to the praises of his glorious grace, mm -hmm. which he is freely given <laughs> in one of in, in his one his love. Verses 5 and 6. We see that God choosing us is linked to his love. It's always going to go back to love. It's always going to reflect back to love. To love. To love. Yeah, yeah. God's cho God choice is something that gives him pleasure and brings him praise. God choosing us highlights his gracious character, not our merit. Because, like I said, there's nothing that we can do or say. That's gonna gain, that's gonna give his love. Mm -hmm. He just loves us unconditionally. My Lord. Yes, My Lord. We know that in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, we are not we are not saved because of our good works, come on, come on. but solely but solely because God's grace. We are all sinners who fail to measure up to God's glory. Romans 3 and 23. Apart from Jesus, all deserves death. My Lord. I know I've done some things that I should have been gone a long time ago. No, no, and I'm quite no. sure that everyone in this pew, besides that baby and Layla, many of these young kids have done something that we're not proud of. Well, that we should have been punished for. Thanks be to God mm. that He didn't give me what I deserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That He didn't give me what I deserve. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. For our merit. Oh, but 
Jesus can't have life, but Jesus, but in Jesus we can have life. It is not because of who we are that God chooses us because of who he is. Yeah. It is because of who he is. Mm -hmm. As in 1 Peter 2 and 9 indicates, the proper response to being chosen by God is to declare God's praise and give him worship. Because he chose me, I can say, thanks be to God. Because he, cho because he chose me, I can say, lift up holy hands and praise be to God. Mm -hmm. Glory to his name. Mm -hmm. We got to worship him. Amen. God also chose us that we could join him in his work, in his work. That's where Pastor Curry comes from. That's where Bishop comes from. That's where uh, Assistant Pastor Matt Knight comes from. That's where all the advantages, that's where everyone in this room comes from. That we can join him in his word. It doesn't. You don't have to have a title come on, come on, come on, come on, to come on. tell someone of the goodness of God. Come on. Amen. You don't have to be called bishop. You don't have to be called yeah. pastor. You don't yeah. have to be called evangelist. You can just tell God. Tell someone about what God has done for you Amen. in your everyday life. Mm -hmm. He woke me up this morning yeah. in your everyday life. He blessed me to be able to put my own clothes on. Come on, come on, Those are come testaments on. that we can share with everyone, and we don't have to have a title. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty part of it. The Old Testament focuses on Israel as God chosen people, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. In Deuteronomy 7 and 9, Moses tells the children of Israel why God chose them. The Lord did not set his affection on you and chose you because you were more numerous than other people, for you were the fewest of all people. But it was because of the Lord's love yeah. you were kept. And the oath he swore to the ancestors that he brought out of the mighty, mighty hand and redeemed them from the land of slavery, from the powers of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Know there that the Lord your God is God. He is faithful, mm -hmm. keeping his covenant of love to that through a thousand generations, and he's still doing it. Yeah. To this day, he's still showing his love and showing his covenant orders to those who love him and keep his commandments. Once again, we see that God chooses to not base, to, the choice is not based on merit. Nothing you can do, nothing you can say will ever cause God to just say, okay, I love you that much. And to a peculiar person or nation, but solely his love and his faithfulness. Just as God chose Israel out of love, and not because of something impassive or impressive about the nation. God chooses us to love too. Amen. As in John, 1 John 3 and 1, it says, See what great love mm -hmm. the Father had lavished on us, that we should be called children mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Why did God choose me? Because his great love. Mm -hmm. He lavished love on us daily. Mm -hmm. When he opens your eyes, mm -hmm. he's lavishing love. Come on, come on. When come he's on. touched, when he's allowing you to drive down the freeway and no car runs into you, you don't run into an accident, yeah. he's showing your love. Now, when he allows you to, to birth a child into the world and, that, and you don't die during childbirth, and the child don't die during childbirth, he's showing you his love. Right. As we show our children love, as we show our spouses love, God's love is unconditional. There's no strings attached. There's no, if you do this for me, I'll do this for you. His love is unconditional. And that's what he shows us every day. But it's his choice to do that. The doctrine predestines us as a, it's difficult to grasp. We naturally tend to think that those who are predestined are chosen because of some merit of their own. After all, that is how we tend to choose. That's how we do it. Layla, I love you because you're, you're my daughter's child and I just love you. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you anything. That's a merit. That, that's something that, that's predestined. She belongs to you. So, of course, you're going to love her. Of course, you're going to show her a lavish love on her. But what about that baby? Mm -hmm. What about those babies back there? Do they not deserve love? And that's what God wants us to know, that he chose us. Because yeah. he didn't say that we deserve love, but he loved us anyway. Because we've done nothing. There's nothing that we've said or done. Nothing to merit us that, to get his love or his favor. For his grace. Amen. But because he loved us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because he loved us, we have so much. But the choices that we make, and this, this is all about choices. There was one great choice 
that was that was made come on. two thousand years come ago. On, come on, come talk on. about it. Talk about it. The choice was made by Jesus mm -hmm. because He loved us. He, he chose to come down to this yeah. filthy earth. Come on, he chose to come down to this place in a humble way. He didn't come uh, being rich. He didn't come being uh, a millionaire. He came as a lowly baby, mm. born to a virgin, mm. because she was chosen. My Lord, my Lord. It's the choices that God made. He chose her to be the vessel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Choices still being made. Not only did he choose us in his decision to come down here as, a, as being born of a virgin, but he also made the choice to heal. Well, to well, deliver, come on, come to on, feed come on. Well, multitudes of people. Because what? He chose us because he loves us. Mm. His choices deemed us to be here. And not only did he make that choice of feeding, feeding those multiple people and feeding and healing the sick and raising the dead, we all hear the accounts of what he's done. But he also chose to go for God got this healing. Yeah, yeah. That healing was not easy. That yeah. was not an easy choice. At least it wouldn't be for me, knowing that I'm gonna, my life is going to end right here because of you, you, you. Because we know he was blameless. We know that he on, was on, without on, sin. On, we know that he was perfect yeah. in all ways. Amen. Anointed. We saw that when he got baptized, how the Holy Spirit just, because of his choice. Because he loved us and the choice that he made, that unconditional love, led him up to off his heel. But it wasn't an easy heal, as I said. He was beaten. On, he was on. mocked. On, he was scourged. On. He come was on. bruised. Come on. Yeah. All those things. Spit on. Yes, that's one of the nastiest things you can do to someone, to spit on them. Amen. But he took that. And guess what? He never said a mother. Right. He right. never said, oh, man, Cheryl, I know that you're going to mess up again. But there was no buts behind God. Amen. He right. just did it. Amen. Why? Because he chose me. Amen. Why did he choose me? Because he loves me. Yeah. So he went up that hill. They beat him, scourged him, they spit on him. They did all manner of things that you wouldn't just think would be humanly possible. But they thought of it and they did it. Amen. He allowed them to nail him to a cross. Uh, putting uh, nails in his hands uh, and his feet. Uh, he allowed them. Yeah. But that was his choice. Uh, because he chose me. Over the over my sin, mm. he chose me. He said, "Sure, I know that you're gonna mess up, but I'm still gonna choose you. I'm still gonna get on this cross for you. I'm still gonna die for you." Not only was he nailed to the cross, but he was put between two things: people that were guilty of doing something, as we know that there was one said, "Hey, you know, you're supposed to be God. You know, you're supposed to be Jesus. Why don't you get us both down? You know, we can get away from here." But the one who said, no, nah, we're guilty, man. We deserve this, but this yeah. man yeah. was without sin. And guess what Jesus did? He looked around and said, hey, I, when I go into heaven, you're going to go to paradise with me. This day you will be in paradise with me. Because he chose that. He chose him. He chose to love him even on the cross. And we know that at the end of that cross, they took him down and they put him in a borrowed tomb. Why was he in a borrowed tomb? Because he wasn't going to be there long. Yeah, it was yeah. a choice. He said, okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come here for you. I'm going to heal sick. I'm going to raise the dead. Because I'm showing you that you can do all things through Christ Jesus. Yeah. I'm showing you these things. I'm showing you that, hey, look, even though I'm on the cross, I will rise again. It wasn't a joke. It wasn't just a saying. He did that. But yes. before he did it, I believe that he went down to yeah. him where all those people had died before yeah. him. He said, look, I'm going home to with my father. If you repent, well, then you can go with me too. Come on, come on. That's why death has no sting. Well, That's why the grave has, the grave has no victory. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Because he did all that for yeah. us yeah. on the cross. Yeah. He did all that in the tomb. Yeah. And on that third day, he oh, rose with power. Come on. Yeah. Come on. All power in his hand. Yeah. Great job. <laughs> but he'll come back for us. Yeah. But it will be a choice that will we go back with him? Mm -hmm. He chose us. But will we choose him? Yeah. Will we choose to do it? Will we choose to tell, hey, I love you. I love you. I love you. Will you choose this day to choose? serve will God, the one that loves you? Will you choose this day to show yeah. love to yeah. everyone that you come?
choice that we made. Get up and we shower and yeah, choice, choice, choice. We made some choices in the house. Shante say, as a whole, I know we're feeling good in the morning. <laughs>
Wednesday night Bible study is at 7 o'clock p.m. Amen? Amen. First True Love is open and continue to pray for our church as a whole. Please continue to keep all our loved ones and our families and our close friends and our co-workers in, your, in, our, in our prayers. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? Please continue to support the church with your tithes and offering. And I, have, I don't have any more announcements. Anybody have anything that they would like to say? If not, everyone have a blessed and safe week. Amen? Amen. Amen. And continue to pray for one another. Amen. 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 Personally, I don't believe that, you know, when one says that uh, God has purpose, for, has a reason for everything, maybe he was uh, not in our own, uh, you know, in the purpose, in the, how would I say? No, he, he was we, he wasn't ready to go. He fought for his life. Mama wasn't ready for him for him to, to be out of here. But in, 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 at the end of the day, we are happy that he's at peace now because he was suffering every day. 
the pain we saw in him mm. that he experienced for those years. Yeah, that. That's too much. Yeah, that. And now that he has gone, we are happy that the peace has come from him. Mm. Yeah. So uh, we thank you guys for being there for us and sharing that moment. are going to occur where you may look to the left or the right and you can't find any answers and you can't find anybody to help you but I'm reminded of the word that says they that wait upon the Lord he shall renew their strength they shall mount up on wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint come on you got to learn how to wait. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Oh, you Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I'm 
Come on, Robin, help me sing. Oh, my 